Erev Tov Chavrim. My name is Stephen Ben Dunoon, and I'm your host for Israeli News Live. A little late getting in this evening for we almost became the news report of the day uh, after meeting with a good friend, Brother Dave, over in Miami this afternoon, actually Fort Lauderdale. On the way back, ended up having a tire that acted a little funny, traveling the interstate, doing about 70, 75 there, and as I decided, well, maybe I should go ahead and get a little bit of gas, I stopped off at the, came off the side lane of the interstate, and just as I made the right, right hand turn to go to the gas station, the tire began to wobble really bad, and I thought, gosh, what in the world is that? Uh, pulled into the gas station only to find that a huge chunk about the size of my hand had been ripped off of the tire, and it was on the verge of blowing. I could only imagine Satan just, just doesn't want us going to Israel. Uh, that would have probably been the end of the trip had that tire blown and flipped down the interstate. But by His grace... He's not going to stop us. Anyway, let's go on and look into some other news here on Chadashot, uh, which is Ynet News. It's an is Israeli news channel here. They're reporting that the U.S. official, uh, or excuse me, U.S. official is reporting to them that Iran is pursuing banned items for nuclear missile work. State Department official says Tehran is still very active, actively pursuing clandestine nuclear procurement efforts by setting up front companies and falsifying documents. Uh, Dubai, uh, Iran has pursued a long-standing effort to buy banned components for its nuclear and missile programs. In recent months, a U.S. official said on Sunday, a period when it struck an interim deal with major powers to limit its disputed atomic activity. Uh, said Van Van Deppen, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for the International Security on Nonproliferation, said Iran was still very actively creating front companies engaging in activity to conceal procurements. Uh, just cannot be trusted there. The reported supplies do not uh, contravene last year's breakthrough agreement between Tehran and six world powers to curb its most sensitive atomic activity in exchange for a limited easing of sanctions damaging its economy. Well, also in some sideline news, not really sure what the authentic authenticity of this would be, but there's also been some discussion as whether or not the Malaysian flight that disappeared about a week ago may have actually been hijacked and flown to Iran and some speculation that perhaps it would be loaded with nuclear weapons and sent either to Israel or possibly even sent to the United States. Who knows? Things are getting more and more interesting all the time. Uh, and in, in, a, in the latest news uh, reported by Arut Shiva regarding the Palestinian uh, and Israeli uh, negotiations for peace, Erekat, Israel's uh, must choose settlements or peace. That was uh, uh, delivered today on the 18th here of uh, 2014. The chief Palestinian Authority uh, negotiator Saib Erekat on Monday once again blamed Israel for the lack of progress in peace talks, saying that the Israelis must choose between settlements and peace. Speaking with reporters following PA Chairman Mahmoud Abbas's meeting with U.S. President Barack Obama, Eric Kott accused Israel of having built more than 10,000 homes in Judea and Samaria since the negotiations began last July. Is this progress? Eric Kott said, according to the Associated Press, we can do it, but I hope and pray that the Israeli government will make the choice settlements or peace. Uh, they can't have both, he declared. Erekat added that the possibility of continuing the talks past the April deadline did not come up in Abbas's meeting with Obama or Secretary of State John Kerry. The negotiations are up on April 29th, he said. According to the AP, you don't need negotiations anymore. You need decisions. Uh, during the meeting between Obama and Abbas, the American president told the Palestinian chairman that both he and Israeli leaders must make tough political decisions and take risk for peace. Uh, it's just, let me just read a little bit more of this. It's important that we, that we hear this article here. 
As I said to Prime Minister Netanyahu when he was here just a few weeks ago, I believe that now is the time to embrace this opportunity, Obama said as he met Abbas in the Oval Office. It is very hard, very challenging. We are going to have to take some tough political decisions and risk if we are able to move forward, Obama said. He did claim, however, through a translator that Palestinian authority, authority had recognized Israel's legitimacy in 1988 and in 1993. We recognized the state of Israel, though not specifically as a Jewish homeland. Well, let me just share with you, though, where we're at in the, uh, in the prophetic landscape of this. Um, I, I can't help but wonder myself and, and I certainly don't have all the answers to this. But when I go back and I look at the uh, prophecy that was given to Rebecca, the two children in the womb, Esau and Jacob. Now, oddly enough, we normally would think that the Palestinians are the descendants of Esau. But in reality, this negotiation is not between the Palestinians and Israel. Remember, Daniel said in chapter 11 that that prince that is to come comes up strong with a small people. That's the Palestinians. So the true negotiations is between the Vatican and Israel. They're just using the Palestinians in order to gain that statehood and then fulfill the prophecy of Ezekiel 35 where it says they will have both nations. They would take both. So both the Palestinians and the Israelis need to take note of what the biblical prophecies are speaking. But in, the, in light of what uh, Erekat is actually saying here, that the peace negotiations need not go beyond the nine-month negotiations, it's interesting to note from Micah in chapter 4, something I've quoted many times on Israel Return, the Stephen Ben Danoon uh, YouTube channel, and just regular prophetic teachings. It says here, now why dost thou cry aloud? This is starting in verse 9. Is there no king in thee? God challenging Israel about her king. Why? Because Israel, when Samuel was the prophet, wanted a king to lead them into battle. And so therefore, God gave them the desire of their heart. It wasn't his perfect will, but it was the desire of Israel's heart. And so now God is asking the question, why Israel is in travail, where is your king? Second, he brings it on to say a little further, is thy counselor perished? Yes, he is. Isaiah's prophecy, the counselor, the prince of peace, he's perished, but he will ride again. He goes on to say, though, I want to really get you to the main point I wanted to bring out to you here, that pains have seized thee as a woman in travail, be in pain and labor, to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the fields. Well, seems like Erekat really kind of hit the nail on the head, so to speak, when he said it's either settlements or peace. Well, clearly, Micah says, you will go out of the city. That is part of the travailing process to bring forth. It's the last minutes of the birth. I think we're going to see a two-state agreement before it's over with. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, Israeli News Live. God bless you and good night.